Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've forgotten who I am, I completely understand. It's been about three months since I posted anything. I'm Soph Soph. I'm known as Soph Soph over on Instagram and here on Flosstube. My name's Sophie or Soph. Either suits, I don't mind. I've been called worse. <laughs> I haven't been around just because I say I haven't been around. I've been on Instagram. I just haven't been on Flosstube due to a lot of things really. First thing, I've just had a lot of overwhelm with trying to fit full-time work back in, friends, family, and filming, and then editing. I love talking to you guys about stitching and sharing it with everyone. I love watching Flosstube as well, but I just felt a little bit of overwhelm over Christmas. I just needed to take some time for myself. We lost my nan just before Christmas day and I just needed to take some time for me. Still stitched because it's what calms me down and it's my therapy. Um, so I have got a lot to show you, but I just didn't have the oomph to get up and film a video. But I have recently just been on a retreat. Technically, it's a private retreat. I always feel like Joey from Friends when I do that. And I always feel like I do it in the wrong place. <laughs> so I've been on a private retreat that was set up for a bunch of lovely ladies. There was 11 of us in total. We all went to North Wales and we all rented an Airbnb, vid visited some local LNS. I actually have some LNSs. We visited two of those and we just stitched it together, socialised, uh, sat in silence together. It was great. It was so lovely to be in a group of people, like-minded people. I really enjoyed myself. And there was a lot of floss tubers there, which gave me the inspiration to film again. So thank you guys. I will list everyone below that was on the retreat that does have a floss tube, so you can check them out. So I just wanted to start with some finishes. Like I said, I have been stitching, even though I've been away for three months. I'm not going to talk about films or TV or books. I've been doing a lot of all of that, but I need to catch you up on my stitching. So I don't think we have time for that today. If we do, I might throw in a few things, but mainly I'm just gonna cram stitching in because I don't want this to be a ridiculously long video. I don't want you to get bored of me after three months, you know? So without further ado, I don't know why I'm set, whenever I sit on camera, I turn, into some like really posh English person, like without further ado, I will show you some of my finishes. So firstly, I have, just gonna get my notes, my lovely little notepad. I write down all of my uh, whips and yeah, it's just the best way for me. I know people use um, online stuff and I, I probably will eventually, but for now, this is what works. So, if you see me looking down, that's where I'm looking. So I've got three finishes for this project. So it's the Creepy Christmas Village Salm by Lola Crow Cross Stitch. I really enjoyed doing this one. If you've been around for a while, you know I'm not a Christmas stitcher, but because Halloween and spookiness was combined with Christmas, I decided to pick this up and stitch. So there was six, that's three, there was six, there we go, patterns in total and they were released each week. I think there was a break in between. I only managed to stitch three in total. And I don't feel like now Christmas has passed, I can actually stitch anymore. So maybe I'll do Jolly July and finish them off then, or maybe I'll wait for next year. So this'll be a whip that's ongoing for a little while. But I'm okay with that. I don't feel like stitching Christmas now, it's over with. The first one was the Carolers. So that, I haven't fully finished it yet. I've still got the fabric bunched up, but this is why I'm gonna fully finish it in. So this is the Creepy Carolers. That was the first release. The second release, I think, don't quote me on this, was the Spooky House, Spooky Haunted House. So there's that one. My cat's got proper wonky eyes though, but I love an animal with a deformity. <laughs> I always say I want a three-legged dog. I want more dogs. And the third one is 
this Christmas tree. I really enjoyed stitching this one. I think I made a mistake on one of the crows or ravens and I just rolled with it, but that was a super fun stitch. I really enjoyed how that came together. And these make me want to get a Christmas tree next year and actually put up some decorations. So thank you, Lola Crow. So the details on this. So I started that on the 3rd of November still ongoing three more to stitch i can't even remember what patterns were released afterwards i think there was like the three ghosts of christmas past i love them all that were released but i after this weekend and all the patterns i've bought my brain is just full up of all the other patterns that i've got maybe it'll be a nice surprise when it comes to jolly july or christmas next year but i've got three more to stitch and i'll be stitching them like i said earlier don't have to repeat myself. That was stitched on 36 count linen in Elephant Run by Fox and Rabbit. And I stitched it with CXC threads just because I had them in stash. So they are my first finishes. Technically, I feel like that's one finish, but they are three little finishes. The next finish is something that's very dear to me. Um, as I mentioned, my nan passed away just before Christmas. Now she struggled for a good few years prior to that with dementia so as a family we felt like we lost her way before she actually passed away um so it was a really really strange one for us um i'm speaking for everyone i can't really speak for everyone it was a strange one for me she was a huge crafter so growing up i always used to look at these tapestries that she had on a wall and one of them or two of them just kind of paved paved yeah paved my childhood so my mum was very crafty as well my nan constantly crocheted i've got loads of her crochet blankets um and i think she just passed her creativity down to me and my cousins um i've got one cousin who i've mentioned before that crochets and i i think oh, i'm just rambling now <laughs> get back to it so these tapestries that she had on her wall I think influenced me to become a cross cross stitcher so my mum used to take me out every summer and just say um, every summer holidays and say pick a craft so I picked cross stitch and that one year and that was the only one that really stuck the others I had fun doing but it'd be a project I'd set down and then not really come back to apart from silversmith and I did that for a while but that's another story um, but cross stitch was one that stuck with me from a young age and I think it was to do with seeing these tapestries that my nan had had and she's had them on her walls for years up until she died she had this one and I went to visit her a couple of weeks before she passed away and I saw the shambles and it's a tapestry pipe by Penelope this is the picture of it it's not the best picture there's some reflection in the glass when I took it but I didn't know where she got it from. I couldn't ask her because obviously she, she wouldn't have any memory of it. So I made it my mission to find this pattern. So I used Google Lens, which is incredible. Um, I wouldn't have found it if it wasn't for that. And I did post on to a Facebook group who were really, really helpful. It turns out that this is a Penelope pattern, a tapestry pattern that is not in stock anywhere any, anymore and because it's tapestry it's got the the colors on it so once you've stitched it it's done you don't have a pattern that you can pass on so that it's more understandable why you can't find it like you can cross stitch so i found one and there was a vintage kit but it was in the states uh, which was weird to me because the shambles is in york in the uk and it would have cost me including postage 160 quid to ship it over to me and I just thought I can't do that um, as much as I really really want to re-stitch what my nan stitched and feel closer to her I can't afford to get that shipped over so I started going back to the drawing board and I was like right I know it's a shambles now I know it's in York what can I do to honour my nan and feel closer to her At this time she was still alive but 
I just wanted to feel like I couldn't go and sit there and talk to her about her past so I just wanted to stitch her past if that makes sense so I ordered this pattern so this is by Bothy Threads and it's the Shambles um, in York and I ordered it, it came in the post and I was like right I'm going to start stitching this to feel closer to her and then she passed away just before um, Christmas so I made it my mission over Christmas to stitch it. I wanted it done before her funeral. I just felt like it would give me some closure. Sorry, this is, oh, I'm getting emotional. It's quite difficult to talk about. Um, so I stitched this up and it's a very, very special piece to me and I can't wait until I can get it framed and put on the wall because my auntie is gonna give me her tapestry so they can hang side by side. So this is my finished shambles and I absolutely love it. Now the picture, um, the completed picture, the colours don't look like this, they're darker, um, but I love how it turned out anyway. And what I did is I did add these clouds in the top, they weren't on the original picture, but on my Nan's tapestry there were clouds in there and I just wanted it to be as close to that as possible. Now, I don't know if you can see, but in that shop sign, I stitched a 21. I'm lying. I stitched a 23, just because that was, that was the year that she passed away. Um, and then I put her initials up in this shop sign, JHR, so June Heather Radford. Um, yeah. So I absolutely love that and it's a really special piece to me. Oh, very emotional. Okay, moving on before you see me cry my eyes out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just want to thank my nan for passing down her creativity to my mum and then to me. I, I don't think I would have this, this craft if it wasn't for her. So I absolutely love that stitch. That's one of my my most favourite I've ever stitched. So that's going to go over there. I will tell you what I was stitched on actually before I put it down. So this was started on the 21st of December. I stitched it on 28 count even weave in sky blue and it was just bought off Etsy. I can't remember what store, I'm sorry. Um, I'll, if I remember I'll pop it down below. And I finished it on the 5th of January 2024. So it was stitched two over two. The next pattern I wanted to show you, it was a sal that I started with my stitchy friend all the way up in Scotland, Diana Nichols. I really wanted to stitch a pattern for my dog Molly and I found this modern folk embroidery pattern and I just thought it was fantastic and I've amended it to suit Molly. Diana did one herself as well and she did it with a her initials and her um, children's initials as well um, and she did it in like a grey and green and it looks really nice. I went for monochrome, I think that's the word, like two of the same colour. If that's not the word I apologise, <laughs> don't come for me in the comments. My English is terrible. So this is the Modern Folk Embroidery, the Hound and the Hair Cell. So I've amended it as you can see I've put Molly and 19 so 19 is the year that I got her and the year that she was born and it says let the hound the hare go chase and I think Molly's never really chased a hare in fact I think we've only ever seen one hare it should really be let the hound the squirrel go chase because she bloody loves a squirrel but yeah I really really enjoyed that one so this is stitched on 40 count one over one is it one over one no, one over two and it's just a 40 count pink like antique pink from coffee craft fabrics and the DMC that I used was 3726 so I started this in October on the 29th of October and I finished it on February 4th um, but I love that I do need to get some fully finishes because I've just got finishes at the moment but yeah that one's that one Oh, this has been a journey. So the Wanderer Sal. It feels weird that I'm not going to be talking about this again, potentially. 
actually I probably will because she's releasing another one soon and I've already asked her what the size is and what count I need to buy for the fabric so I am going to be stitching the next one. <laughs> um, so you will be seeing more of me wandering all over the world in black work but this one has been finished. So where am I with my notes? Let me get this right. Okay, so The Wanderer Sal by Quarter Neon Creations was one of, <clears throat> was the first sal, I've, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. So it was the first sal I've ever started and I was really unsure about it at first. I didn't know if black work would work for me, if a monthly pattern would work for me, but A, I fell in love with black work and B, I loved having something each month on a certain date that I could stitch. And I think monthly is manageable and I really loved it. Really loved just going, right, I can't stitch on this one anymore. I've got to do this one on the 15th of each month. So this was started on the 27th of January. No, I'm lying. It was started on the 29th of April, 23, and finished on the 27th of January, 2024. So this is my finished piece and she is absolutely beautiful just look at all those I don't think I've shown you the last two yeah so I'll go through them all so we've got Venice Cairo New York then we go up to Rio down even Rio Athens Japan and Paris and then we've got oh my arms <laughs> um Istanbul, what was the other one? Singapore, sorry. And then we got Sydney. Oh my God, I absolutely love them all. I think Japan's my favorite. I did love doing all of them and Sydney and Rio are pretty cool too. But J Japan, I think is my favorite. I can't believe it's come to an end now. Feels like the end of an era. Honestly, if you're thinking about doing this, do it. I really, really, really enjoyed it. And I will be starting the new one she's releasing. I think it's being released by the end of Feb. Not that I need to spend any more money after this weekend just gone. Yeah, she's releasing it at the end of Feb. The border will come out March? God, I don't know. It's going to be end of Feb, March, and then I think they'll be released each month then. So go get the border stitched up. Um, I can't wait to see what the border looks like and then what city she does. I have been not even like subtly nudging because she said, suggest some patterns to us. So I was just like, Cardiff, do Cardiff. We've got a castle, we've got dragons, we've got, sorry to anyone else in the world because I am going to be biased now. We've got the best flag. I mean, we've got a dragon on it. I know there are loads of other lovely, lovely flags. We've got daffodils. We've got Welsh ladies. We've got loads of weird and wonderful, like, myths. If you just read the Mabinogion, you would just be like, what the hell? Why are these children's stories? They're just weird and wacky. Um, so, yeah, we've got loads, loads of stuff. So... I was just trying to say like, just do the capital city of, of Wales, please. <laughs> I think it would be awesome to see it on there. She, she's under no obligation and this isn't me trying to pressure her again. I, I'm just happy to stitch whatever country, but it would be nice to have Cardiff on there, being a Cardiff girl. I don't know if, you, if, if I've even mentioned this yet, but I've just been on a cross stitch retreat in North Wales and this is one of the ones I took with me. I took about four whips and I think this is the one I concentrated on the most just because it was a nice easy stitch to have when we were just chatting. This is my finish, my last finish and I love this so much. So this is Cottage Core Sampler by Stitch Sprout. So there was Soph, another Soph, was at the retreat and she was also stitching Stitch Sprout but she was doing Baba Yaga and it was weird that the two Sophies were stitching on Stitch Sprout. 
if you've been around a while, ladybirds are really special to me and I absolutely love mushrooms as well. And the apples are just an added bonus really, aren't they? So this is by Stitch Sprout, as I said. It's on 20 count even weave in a blue like mottled uh, fabric. Um, sorry, I haven't ironed this. But if you can see the like detailing on the fabric, that isn't just me not ironing it. It is like a almost looks like the back of your eye when you look at a light. So this is by Coffee Craft Fabrics again. It was just an off cut I bought in the Bristol Stitchy Retreat and it just went so well with this pattern. I've got enough to stitch it again. I feel like I want to stitch it for my two sisters because they, the ladybirds are special to us for our mum and she used to have one of these tattoos as well. That was started on the 17th of December 2023 and I finished it recently on the 15th of Feb and she is wonderful and I can't wait to frame her. I've been going around all the charity shops which we've got a lot in Ponty and I can't find a frame that I want. I want like a nice square ornamental frame. If I don't find it there I might have to like go into some like TK Maxx shops or I don't know, where else? George, Asda, um, see if they've got any, because I know sometimes they have really nice frames. So they are all my finishes. There's a lot, and we're like 25 minutes in. I'd probably edit it a bit, but they're all my finishes. And I will now go through my whips. Now, my whip count has significantly dropped from all these finishes. Let me count how many I have. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I got five. Yeah, one being a new start since I last saw you. So I'll show you that one first actually and then I'll go on to my whips. So this is what my new start is. So it's the Long Dog Sampler and it's the Pilgrim and I absolutely love this. So it says, Dare to Dream, the completion of my labours leaves me with a joyful heart. And me and Sherry from the, um, the Cross Stitch Retreat I just went to, so just so Sherry, looking at this pattern on the weekend and she pointed out animals that I'd never even noticed. So the next to the horse here is a little seahorse, which I didn't even realize. There's like a fox there. There's this little guy that I've just stitched that I don't even know what he is. He's like a mix between um, like a cockerel and a squirrel but he's great so yeah this is going to be a very very long start like long stitch for me but I'm just going to do one stitch at a time and just see where I get to so this is where I am with it teeny teeny tiny start see little squirrel cockerel I'm not even going to try and amalgamate those because it's going to sound dirty isn't it so, details on this one. It's The Pilgrim by Long Dog and I started it on the 8th of February 2024 and I started this on 40 count Newcastle Linen in Lagoon. So this is by Lakeside Needlecrafts and this is the fabric that Wolfie Stitches just inspired me to use. I think she was stitching a, the Crow um, cottage samplers I think on this and it just looked incredible. So I wanted to use the fabric really on something so I thought it'd be a perfect one so yeah that's my teeny tiny start and I'm just gonna like I said one stitch at a time so I'm stitching it with DMC 3799 I was gonna do 3799 all over but I've been trying to find people who are stitching it online and a lot of people have like used variegated threads they've done different colors for every animal. Now I don't really want to do that. I don't want it too colorful just because the background's colorful. But what I might do is the horse, I might do in like a dark gold color. The frog, I might do in a deep green. And then the raven here. I feel like I want to do some sort of blues, but the background is blue. If I can get like a really, really navy, almost like the um, grey I'm doing I might do that so it's slightly different but I just feel like these three need to be different and maybe I'll do the the writing in a different colour let me know what you think what you think might pop 
but I do quite like it if even if I did it all one colour as well. Um, I'll see how I feel when I go along. It's a lot of stitches to unpick if I don't like the colours so I'm very much I stick to the rules and I like to follow patterns so when I'm given free reign and I get to pick I'm just like oh god my brain which ones do I pick and then I think oh I picked the wrong colour I've got to unstitch all of this but I'm just going to go for it and see what happens I suppose. So I just wanted to show the whips that I've worked on. I don't know if I've got pictures of what they were when I last showed you because it's been so long. I will say and this is what I look like and if if I do have that picture I'll show you up here. If I don't just roll with it and I'll get better at my editing next month. It's been a while, I'm rusty. Don't judge, please. These are in no order. I've just, I'm not as prepared today. I just thought I'm just going to wing it and see what happens and I can do the editing afterwards. But I'll just show you my whip. So I'm going to pick the first one on the pile. So this is Pink and Sun Landscape and it's by Crystal Feather Crafts. I started this on the 21st of August last year, so 2023. And I think this is what it looked like when I showed you last time. Now I picked it up and I've done quite a significant amount I think and I've actually really enjoyed stitching this so I know before I've complained that it's a block colour but I've actually really enjoyed stitching on it recently so this is where I am with it so I've done one full page apart from this little guy in green I haven't stitched him yet but I'm going to do him when I continue the tree up on the other page so it's weird because they started on the bottom left from this just because of the way the pattern looks so yeah that is where I am this will be what it looks like completed um, so I've got a little ways to go very much enjoying that one it's stitched two over two with CXC threads on 28 white even weave which I just bought off Etsy and I can't remember the shop I'm sorry I love it I can't wait until I, I stitch the sun, the big pink sun. It'll just set the whole set the whole piece off, I think. The next one I have on my whip pile. He's been very abandoned recently. He's just a lot of block colour. And he takes a lot for me to want to pick him up and stitch. Usually it's a bit of a chore. So I'm hoping I'll get him finished in 2024, but we'll see. And my sisters have their eye on him already. And I think the amount of time I've taken to stitch on him, he might get framed up, go to live with them for a bit and then come back to sit on my wall behind me when I finally decorate this room. I'll actually show you what I'm talking about. So this is my Queen or Freddie Mercury pattern by Unique Stitch Crafts off Etsy. So I don't think this pattern's available anymore. So I started it on the 13th of April, 2023. So this is where I was last time I showed you, I think. I've not done too much more, but I do have a two page finish on him. So this is where I am. So I've done half of his body and I managed to fill out this huge block of black, which wasn't the most fun, if I'm honest. It is gonna look great when it's finished, but he's a bit tedious. Which, I can't believe I just said Freddie Mercury was tedious because he was far from it, was he really? So this is what it'll look like finished. And it's just a case of me just sitting down and just getting to it. He'll look great when he's finished. I'm just checking that I've actually told you everything. So it's Zweigart 18 Count Ada, and it's from Luca S and it's in white, but it's getting steadily more dirty as the years go on. <laughs> so that's my Freddy. Carolyn Manning, Eclipse haven't touched it since I last spoke to you guys it is on my next one to do I'm trying to like get my whip count down so I can bring new ones in so everything from 2023 has been stitched on apart from this bad boy that I'm going to show you because I don't think I'm finishing him in 2024 so this is my one and only heaven and earth designs full coverage not that I don't have any in stash I do um I don't think I can have two on a the go at one time so it's this this one until it's finished so I've got a full page finish and I've started on the second page here and as you can see it's just a load of branches just a load of branches so this is where I was last time I showed you I think 
this is what it's going to look like when it's complete and it is called The Comforts of Home by Terry Redlin and as you can see I've just stitched the top left corner but I've got a long way to go. It's really beautiful and I can't wait until it's finished and I'm enjoying it. I shouldn't really say I can't wait till it's finished with the heaven and earth because I will be waiting and I'll be waiting a long time. So I'm gonna enjoy the process of this. So I started this on the 17th of September, 2023. It's on 28 count Laguna Easy Count and I did it in CXC. So CXC is a lot more affordable for me to do. I started stitching it two over one called for in full cross in the top corner here and it's really dense here and it was too dense for me to stitch. So I changed it up after speaking to Tan and I changed it to two over one tent stitch and I railroaded it as well. So the coverage, as you can see, there's a bit of white in there, but it's it's not that noticeable. When you pull it away at a distance, you're gonna actually look at it when it's completed. You can't even notice and it doesn't make much difference to the coverage. So I'm gonna stick with that. I need to pick that up a little bit more and actually put more work into it. I did pick it up at the retreat over the weekend, but I hadn't stitched a uh, Royal Rose method in a while. So I was just like, do you know what? I am gonna mess up here. I nearly swore then, oops. I am gonna mess up here. So I'm just gonna put it down and I'll pick it up again at home when it's, when I can fully concentrate on it. Cause I just wanted to chat really and see what everyone else was stitching on. So they are all my whips. I will go on to my haul in a moment, but I just want to say a huge thank you to Rosie and Tan for setting up the retreat over the weekend. We dubbed it the Disturbed Women Retreat, which we definitely were. And we, yeah, I had such a lovely time. I think I mentioned earlier, there was two people I knew, which were Rosie and Tan. The rest, I some of them I knew from Instagram and then others, I didn't know at all, but it was just a lovely bunch of people. And I spent way too much money over the weekend. So I'm gonna show you my haul and everything that I've bought. One thing I will say is doing a haul in person with that group of ladies was the highlight of my weekend. We went to Nimble Thimble, which was incredible. We went to Create Nostalgia, which was incredible. Just seeing all these stitches like stitched up being able to sit in such beautiful places and relaxing places and being able to to be surrounded by cross stitch was so lovely and to stitch as well it was really really nice if you are close to nimble thimble or um create nostalgia i would suggest going to either or both um they are quite near each other it's about a three hour drive for me but it was worth the journey really worth the journey i've gone off on a tangent again uh, what was I saying? I was saying, oh yeah, my favourite part of the weekend though was sat with the ladies, the disturbed women, should I say, in a circle and just went round and all did our haul from the weekend and I kind of want that energy when I'm doing hauls. Like, of course, I'm sharing it to you guys. There's probably like an excitement of, oh, I want to stitch that, da, da, da. But seeing it in person was so lovely. And like the only other person I show it to is like, or people I show it to is potentially like my partner or friends, but they're not into cross stitch. They're like, oh, that's nice. But when you're surrounded by a bunch of cross stitchers and you're showing them patterns, they're like, oh my God, I need that. And they have that same like want and like passion for the projects you, you're gonna stitch. It's so nice. So ladies, yeah, monthly, monthly haul, please. <laughs> even though after this weekend I'm going to try and stop spending but I do I am attending another retreat next weekend the bee stitchy retreat in Devon which I'm really looking forward to so I am going to stop rambling and show you what I bought which is a lot <sighs> actually I won't show you what I bought first I'm going to show you why I was gifted so my lovely sister Jenny um one of my lovely sisters Jenny she bought me this for my birthday. Now, Jenny's a bit of a cross-stitcher as well, but she's just got a little one. Uh, well, she's got three little ones, uh, two stepsons and her daughter, Daisy, and she's got her hands full, so she hardly gets time to stitch. But when she does, she does amazing pieces. She's not as obsessed as me, but she does, does like to stitch. So she knows what she's doing when she picks 
kits and she picked me this lovely bothy threads kit sorry about the crinkling what's this one called bellflower so it's got like william mollis william mollis who's he he could be a person actually william morris vibes it could be a william morris picture i don't know but i've got the strawberry thief to stitch and it's very similar to that and i love it and the best thing about it is fully kitted up as well although i'll probably change the ada to something like even weave or maybe 40 count just because i'm in love with 40 count these days absolutely love it don't know when i'm going to start it but it is going to be a start at some point maybe in my retirement <laughs> The next thing I was gifted was from Sally at the retreat. I saw Tan had this DMC tin and Sally said she doesn't use it and I'm welcome to it if if I wanted it and I absolutely love this. I think it was from a retreat that they went to. So I feel like I'm cheating with the fact that I've got one now, but I just wanted somewhere to put my needle minders um, so I could just pick from them. So here's a collection of my needle minders that aren't on projects. This one, um, Michelle, known as Stitch Mania, gave us each this at the retreat this weekend. What the duck? Um, a little Pokemon there, I can't remember his name. I used to be a huge Pokemon collector, um, like Pokemon card collector. I think just, I used to collect Beanie Babies, Pokemon cards, and now I collect cross stitch patterns. So yeah. I am definitely a collector. So there's some of my needle minders. I've mentioned all of these on previous videos. So if you want to know where they're from, just go and have a look at my other videos and you'll find out. Um, I think I'm gonna put some like scissors and stuff in the bottom, but for now it's just my needle minder. minder. On to what I have bought. There are some things I bought this weekend which are going to be in a like surprise a gift exchange next weekend so I don't feel like I can show that I don't know the etiquette really this retreat I just went on was my first and it was a private one so this one is um, a bee stitchy retreat so I'm not sure of the etiquette don't know if I can show it so I'm just not going to I'll take some photos and I'll share it on my Instagram um, after said exchange so stitch mania stash or Michelle she makes lots of like scissor th fobs i won't say fobs scissor fobs needle minders and lots of other things she also makes uh project bags so she made this one and i fell in love with it and bought it because it's got a uh, sheep on it and it's this project bag so you've got a little section in the front and then you've got like an elasticated bit here and you've got space for your project in there and then you put your tablet in this section and I was carrying this around with me like a little pillow on the, the retreat I really like it so check out her stuff the other thing that I bought from one of the ladies there Soph the other Soph she is turtle bay stitcher oh turtle bay stitches on Instagram she does incredible project bags and this is the one that I bought from her. I think it's like Retro Flower. I haven't used this yet because it's just so perfect. I don't know what to put in there, but I love the 70s like vibe this was given off. So there's that one and look at the tiny little dragonfly. He is perfect. So I absolutely love, love, love. So now we're going into the huge amount of patterns that I've bought myself. We joked on the weekend about the fact that we're just uh, preparing for retirement. So this is what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I think I've shown you this one before. This was before I bought this a couple of months back, but I'll show you anyway, just in case. So this is the Jeanette Douglas uh, designs and it's vintage birds. So this is the reason I got it, the peacock. I absolutely love it. So I can't wait to stitch that one. So the reason I'm showing this one is because it inspired some patterns that I bought from Nimble Thimble on the weekend, or a pattern, sorry. So there's that Vintage Birds one. So these two patterns that I'm going to show you now are just random purchases from eBay. Just when you're telling yourself you're not going to buy any patterns, you have a browse and then you just bid on something. That's what happened to me. So they are the Sampler Company 
designs by Brenda Keys. I've never seen any patterns from them before, but I fell in love. So I don't know if you can see it through the glare, but it's like, I'll take it out of the package because I've actually opened this one. Oh, it's still glary. So I got this one because it reminded me of my dada. So my dada was my dad's dad. We didn't call him granddad, it was dada. But the reason I got it is because he was in the Navy and he traveled all over the world. And the what it says on here is, for my dearest love, he works upon the sea on the waves that blow wild and free. He splices the rope and he mends the sails while southward rolls to the home of the whale. Now he lived in Wales. So what I'm gonna say is, um, I'm gonna change it to while south southward he rolls to the home of Wales. So he, um, he went off to the Navy when he was 16. I think he was 15 actually, he lied about his age, got into the Navy and he left my nan. He knew my nan before he left. And then he came back to her and they married after he came back. And yeah, it just reminds me of their little love story. So I just wanted to stitch that. So that was the reason I bought these two patterns. And then I couldn't say no to the next one I bought because the seller was selling it and I just went on a bit of a, a bidding frenzy as you do. So it's by the same same person, Brenda Keys, and it's a sampler company. And it's got like four little four little sections. So the first one says house on the hill. The second one doesn't have anything. And then it's got where sheep may safely graze. And then it's got Le Meur. Um, but what I'm going to change it to is a moor, which is the sea in Welsh. And then I'm going to translate that into Welsh as well. Or both, of, all three of them into Welsh. Someone's coming in to give me a cup of tea. Yeah. Thank you. What is it? That's a surprise. Oh, thanks. Shut the door. No, just be quiet. <laughs> Love you. I think I finished talking about that when I got distracted. Uh, by lovely Johnny, brought me up a cup of tea. See, I can be nice about you, Johnny. So, where was I? So back to my haul. Nimble Thimble was the first shop that we stopped in. So on the way up to North Wales, I stopped here. I think it's Mid Wales, the Powys area. It took me a good few hours to get there, like three hours. So it's not like my local needle store, but it's in my country and now I know it exists, I want to revisit. Um, I bought a few things from there. So the first thing I bought was some fabric. So this is 32 count Belfast linen in like a, it's called raw linen. And I just, I really like this pattern. As you can tell, I've stitched on similar stuff. It's kind of like a burlap sack sort of material. And I think the vintage birds would look really nice on that and some of the other patterns that I've bought. So I just like the little, how it was um, packaged up as well, it's really cute. So that was the fabric I bought. I loved the way it was set out. There was like a Halloween section, there was like a Christmas section, all the, the stitching on the walls were incredible. But she had like a little bargain bin and there were some patterns that were just a pound and I couldn't resist this one. I wouldn't have bought it usually, but I thought it was really cute. So this, I've never seen this before. Like this uh, cross stitch designer. I'm trying to figure out how to say it. It's called Filigram, I think. And it's um, the Mountain Collection and this is the Water Trout. And don't know why but I just fell in love with this little trout. I think it'd be nice stitched on pink potentially. I've still got some of that 40 count pink left so stitching that on pink would be really lovely. I might start stitching that soon. I think it's really cute. The next pattern is another Jeanette Douglas and this is why I showed you the vintage birds one earlier because I couldn't resist when I saw this. So it's the vintage animals. I mean look at the raccoon, the fox. I just oh my god. 
So Talking Dog Stitcher, Rachel, who was on the retreat, also bought a Jeanette Douglas pattern while we were there. And it was like an acorn one. And I love that as well. I really, really want to stitch it. Um, so Rachel, if you're watching, swap these afterwards, please. <laughs> on the back, there's some other ones that she's done. And I would like to get the vintage flowers as well. She also does like vintage stars here. I'm not really into that one. So I want these and then maybe the acorn one. Yeah, I love collecting patterns now, I've, I've realised. So yeah, that one is would look nice on that Belfast linen as well. The other pattern I bought from Nimble Thimble was this Kathy Barrick design. Mother Nature. And I just... Yeah, she's awesome. The moon, the hairs. It reminds me of a book I read at the beginning of last year. Hair House, I think it was called, by Sally Hinchcliffe. And it was like a, a witchy book. And she looks quite witchy to me and all the hairs around her. It makes me want to reread the book because I really enjoyed it. So I might do that when I'm stitching that, actually, just to get into the vibe. I'm not sure what colour I would stitch her on. Maybe plain because of all the colours in it. But yeah, love that love that for me so the next bit of haul is from create nostalgia both shops we went to were incredible uh create nostalgia they made us scones and we sat in their little conservatory and we looked out over the mountains of wales and it was absolutely lovely i could happily like live there if they want me if they're happy for me to move in i will <laughs> but i bought some really lovely patterns and spent lots of money so the first one that i bought was the prairie schooler and it's abc and obviously i now need to buy the rest of the alphabet i've recently been shown um a lady's floss tube i can't i don't know her name rachel just posted a picture on our little chat about it and she showed them all stitched up. I think she's stitching all of the alphabet on one and adapted them and they look lovely. So we've got A is for anchor, B is for blackbird and C is for cow and that is the one that sold me. I had an obsession with cows growing up and I still love them. My whole room was like cow print and before that it was Dalmatian print so I think I've got something in me that loves black and white splotches. <laughs> But yeah, that pattern, I can't wait to stitch it. I keep saying this about all of them. I can't wait to stitch all of them. I just can't stitch them all at the same time. Not enough hands, not enough time. But yeah, that is going into my little retirement collection. This one was like left field choice. Not something I would usually buy, but I just fell in love with it. Don't usually buy Christmas stuff, as you know. The, the odd thing slips through the net when I'm feeling particularly festive doesn't happen that often but this one so i've not seen this designer before either lily violet um and that's the name of it and i'm not even going to try and pronounce that because i will butcher it there's this lovely christmas scene so there's like some christmas houses with snow on with some baubles and uh, mistletoe i might take out the baubles when i stitch it because and maybe the ribbon, because without them, it could be any time of year. Obviously, not any time of year, it's got snow. But it doesn't necessarily have to be Christmas. But I was stood there, and I was um in an R in. I paid for the other patterns and the fabric that I bought that I'm going to show you in a minute. And I was like, I'm not sure about this. And Kate, um, who was there, just whispered over my shoulder, you'll regret it. <laughs> um, so I listened and I bought and she was the silent enabler. She would just whisper into people's ear all weekend, you need to do it, buy it. <laughs> so it's her fault. Yeah. And the next thing I bought from Create Nostalgia was this vintage mocha. And it's in 32 count. And everyone needs a bit of this in their stash really, don't they? So this could be also for the, the vintage birds or vintage acorns or whichever one I decide to stitch first. But I just thought, yeah, everyone needs a bit of that in their life. There's more, 
there's more. <laughs> I am going to the Bee Stitchy retreat next week and Marnie's mixed bag's going to be there and she had a bit of a sale on her website for the people going to the retreat. So I obviously had to buy some. Now I thought I'd be picking it up at the retreat but she posted it to me which is great because now I can actually take one with me and start stitching it there. Don't know which one yet but I'm going to choose one because it'll be my uh, Bee Stitchy retreat pattern. So the first one is Ink Circles by Mother Maya. And I bought this one because I was looking at all the patterns and my partner Johnny saw it and was like, oh, that one's really cool. So when he gets enthusiastic about a pattern, I feel like I need to embrace that. <laughs> um, and I think I'll stitch this one for him. I think I might actually bite the bullet and do some variegated thread on this. So I'm going to do some research into it because I know when you stitch it sometimes it goes one way and the other and I've not stitched with it before so I want to get a nice like variegation to it if that's the right word but I just thought that was a lovely pattern. I spotted this um, at the Bristol retreat. Marnie's mixed bag had this and I put it down and I saw it again on her website and I was like I don't know why I put that down. I really like it so I had to buy it. So this is Riley Harbour by Kathy Barrick again. So very Victorian. Don't know why it is with me and Wales at the moment and like boats, but it seems to be my theme and houses. So that one will be stitched at some point. I think I'll go for like different colours. I think I'm actually not going to follow the rules on this one and add some like bright colours into it because it does look a bit dark. But yeah, we shall see. And then my last physical pattern, because I have got some ones that I've bought as PDFs I want to show you, is another long dog. Not that I need it. I just saw it and I fell in love. So this one is called Quilts and I love it. Houses again, horses, Victorian vibes, autumn, autumnal, dogs, just everything I like in life really, isn't it? So yeah, don't know when I'll start that one. Maybe I'll have one do long dog on at a time. But I couldn't pass that up, especially because it was on sale. I wasn't planning on buying any more. And then after the retreat, loads of the, the ladies were tagging me in Mama X Witch patterns. And I've seen and admired her stuff before, but I've never bought any. But they were all saying how much is like, speaking it speaks so so vibes and it's true they it feels like she's looked into my soul and designed a cross stitch from it it's a bit spooky there's just like frogs and camping and yeah everything i love all in one so what did i buy so i bought this pattern which is sleeping sun by mama x witch and I just thought it was absolutely adorable. I love all the animals on it and the moths and the sun is just so sweet. It's like nighttime and it's just gone to bed. And usually there's a lot of moon patterns and I just saw that, that it was like a dark night but there's a little sleeping sun and I just thought that was really sweet. So I bought that one. She had a sale on actually and I just thought, well now's the time to go mad and, and buy four. The next one I bought, I've had on my wish list for ages on Etsy. Um, this one is Camping Toads and I love frogs, I love toads, I love autumn and I love camping. So this is the pattern. There's even some mushrooms thrown in there for good measure and also marshmallows. We were having a chat on the weekend about marshmallows, how it's like the, the best thing to do when you go camping. So I feel like I needed to get this pattern. Enough said really, isn't it? Another one of hers this pattern called lady goose and i just thought she was absolutely gorgeous i love geese whenever i see them flying in a v i just get really happy it makes me feel like home and i don't know why i always joke around and say i was a goose in my last life i think i've already explained this on my channel actually so um yeah maybe i'm weird again just everything i like in a cross stitch i had to buy it the final stitch and this is the one that tan tagged me in um is called spring camp and this is it and it's got a VW camper in it 
sorry, I keep looking down because I've got the pattern on my lap, like digital form. It's got a bat, which I love. It's got some like cute, weird little animals around a campfire. Like I said, she looked into my soul and she made patterns and I had to buy all four of them. There were so many more I wanted to buy, but yeah, I bought them. So they will be stitched up at some point, but for now they're in my little collection on my iPad. So those four are from Mama X Witch. And then two more PDF patterns that I bought. These I just fell in love with on Etsy. I've never really bought anything from this designer before and I've not really followed them, but I absolutely fell in love. Um, so needle lock designs. So I absolutely love pigeons. I don't know why. I know they're everywhere, but they're really cute. This pattern is called Street Smart and I fell in love with it. I think the mix of the pigeon sat in front of some houses that look like they're from Amsterdam sold me. The next pattern I bought from them is Very Me Again. It's called Lakeside Cabin and this is what it looks like. So it's just a lovely little cabin in the woods in front of a lake and some birds in the sky. I just fell in love. It does look like a little Pokemon house as well from the old Pokemon like Game Boy game and I was obsessed with that as a child too so it just feels like it's got a lot of nostalgia in there for me and um, I would love to live there. So that's everything. I think that's everything I've bought. I don't want to, I've probably left something out and I'll find it in my stash and put it on the next video. But like I said, I haven't posted in God knows how long and this video is going to be God knows how long. So I don't want to talk about anything else like book wise, have been reading, I have been watching a lot of TV because it's winter. Um, let's be honest, not much else to do in the dark nights, although it is getting lighter, which I'm really excited for. But yeah, that's all I wanted to show you guys today. I wanted to come back, say hello, show you everything I've been working on because it's been a lot. Is there anything else I wanted to say? I'll be back again maybe in a couple of weeks just to show you what I got from because I'm inevitably going to spend at the Be Stitchy retreat. There's also a Cardiff retreat I'm going to in March which is a day retreat so I just feel like I'm I'm going to be bankrupt by the end of March but we'll see. It's my hobby isn't it? I'm justifying it to myself and I don't need to really. If I want to spend my money on it I can. <laughs> I'm just rambling now and trying to justify me spending a lot of money on my craft and my belly's rumbling so I think I'm gonna take that as a sign to go and eat a Welsh cake have a cup of tea and just chill out for the rest of the day and maybe do some editing the last time I filmed it took me about two weeks to edit so we are on the 17th of February today so we'll see when I actually manage to get it out but I'm gonna sign off now and say goodbye but it's been lovely chatting to you all again and I will catch you all soon